I used to live up by the Grand Teton National Park years and years ago, back when all those strange missing person reports were starting to come out. I feel like even being a civilian, I was probably led into some information that I probably shouldn't know about. Having friends who work the Forest Service and local law enforcement, and among other places in my family, I felt like I had an advantage of knowing things that other people probably didn't know about. I'm not trying to sit here and boast and say I have top level clearance when it comes to knowledge, but I've heard talking. And I've also had a chance to read David Polite's Missing 411 book, which kind of just coincides with a lot of the things that are going on, especially around the Grand Teton National Park area. Trust me, right out. The information is disturbing at best. And if missing persons aren't disturbing enough, it's the manner in which they disappear, and the things that I've heard circulating are even more disturbing. Any information I reveal to you, I will not reveal the identity of whom the individual I got it from, and I will keep their identity anonymous as to protect them. Not that I have anything mind-blowing, but it's definitely more than a civilian should know about, which brings me to my first topic. I don't know how much you know about dogmen and cryptids in general, even though you read a bunch of stories on them, so I'll just throw this at you. Up here in the Yellowstone area, and all the way down to the Grand Teton, we have these things called buffalo wolves. The name says it all. These are wolves that are probably close to three times the size of a normal wolf, and not only do they ride in a pack, but they also will walk up on their hind legs. I've been told by Forest Service specifically, they can kind of resemble a werewolf. They are tactful, strategic, very intelligent, and very hostile, while many consider them to be a cryptid and don't exist. It's more than enough proof for some of my close friends who have to deal with their messes. Not too long ago, one of these things killed about three wolves from a neighboring wolf pack. We believe it was a tack that was all territorial based, but we don't really know. I was given very little insight to the gruesome scene of coming upon three dead wolf bodies ripped into pieces. If that's not enough proof for you that something more is out there doing this, then I don't know what to tell you. There is no known natural animal that can tear three wolves to pieces like that. Bears, yeah, but bears don't do that, or act like that. And if you want to break down the science of it, bears and wolves have survived in the wild together. They don't compete for the same food, and while bears are slower and much more powerful, wolves are more agile and they know that bears can take them down, so wolves don't really ever mess with bears. And if there are ever circumstances in the wild, which I'm sure there have been, where bears and wolves have had some sort of standoff, I guarantee you it would not look like this. Three wolves mutilated, ripped into pieces, with no trace of blood or anything from an opposing predator. I'm sorry, but even as a skeptic, there's no known predator or creature that rips wolves into pieces. It is widely speculated by Forest Service that these buffalo wolves are a huge reason that there are such a thing as missing persons. There has yet to be definitive proof, like pictures or any other sort of evidence, but from what I'm told, the entire area is a giant breeding ground for these wolves. If you know anything about the missing 411 books, which I'm going to assume you don't, you'll know that people have gone missing all over the country under weird and strange circumstances. Personally, I can't attribute all of that to these buffalo wolves, but something is going on. All I can speculate from my area is that I strongly believe it is these creatures. Of course, there lacks proper evidence and proof. And then that's when you get into a very strange phenomenon, like only finding one shoe, or one article of clothing, or they'll find the person's body, completely intact and unscathed, and appear to have died from exposure. Those kinds of things I can't properly summarize because I don't know. I do believe that if it is a buffalo wolf, they are just outright killing and eating people with no questions asked. I know there is a massive population of deer and other various wild game, but I try to think in my head of how much meat that it takes a day to feed a 5-600 pound meat eating predator. Because of every time that I've ever been told about these things, it's always just been how big they are and how massive they are from their head down to their bodies, and me not ever having seen one is hard to fathom, considering wolves are already pretty big, 
So I'm trying to imagine a super predator, three times the size, living in packs out in the wild. Now, the second thing I want to mention is their dens. It's believed that these things are living underground, or possibly carved into the mountainside in deep cavern systems. Wherever the pack resides, it's not out in the open. Because it's believed that these beings are far more intelligent and possess some humanoid quality to them, they stay in the far outer reaches of the wilderness, shrouded in mystery. And from what I know, there's only been a real handful of sightings from park rangers and law enforcement. Even their face-to-face -face encounters are scarce and far and few in between. Along with some of the missing person files they have, and the bodies they do eventually find that are unscathed and untouched and just seem to have died of exposure. There are the other small percentage of bodies that they find, well, not in the best of conditions, if you know what I mean. I'll spare you the bloody and gory details, but long story short, they weren't found in one whole piece. After coroners have had ample time to test the bodies for all things DNA, study the manner in which they were attacked and killed, or from what little remains they could even gather of what's left of the person. There doesn't seem to be any DNA evidence to support that they were attacked and killed by a bear, or even a pack of wolves, but rather something else entirely. What exactly seems to be the grand circulating question that nobody can come up with an accurate answer for? Empty hypotheses and skepticism are continuously thrown around and circulated, but no physical answers it forces you to see the grim reality that camping just isn't as safe as they claim it to be. If word got out to the public that these kinds of things were going on as often as they are, from not only the park ranger's service, but from the law enforcement officials, well, you would have complete chaos and panic. Parks would lose substantial revenue, and the Forest Service would take a massive hit. And then there are those enough who are fortunate enough to be informed by knowing the right people and those of us who can make the right decisions based on what's really going on. Sightings, encounters, and quote-unquote happenings have been increasing exponentially in the past 20 to 30 years. It's strongly believed that their population is growing substantially, and because there's so little data and availability to properly study these creatures, nobody is really sure why. One of the massive repercussions of their population substantially growing like it is as they start moving out to more urban populated areas. Next thing you know, you're hearing left and right from people reportedly seeing werewolves, as they call them, in populated cities, suburban areas, and even more. It'll start with the homeless population, since they're a very easy target, and often go to areas that are more secluded and in the dark. When they go missing, or get eaten, attacked, what have you, no one really cares because, well, they were homeless and likely didn't have really any attachments to anybody or anything. In fact, the homeless population might even act as an easy target for them, since it's pretty much free food, assuming they are moving out towards the urban areas and targeting homeless people. But, if what I have to say turns out to be true, you'll start seeing the homeless individual population decrease. Sure, in major areas like Skid Row, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, the numbers are skyrocketing. But try traveling out to areas that are a little more rural, where there are much more thicker forests and places to hide. For the homeless, these are some of the best places because it allows you places to hide, be secluded, and set up your own camp without ever being bothered. But at the same time, you run the risk of other things. The other thing to think about too is when you see an empty homeless camp, you don't ever think really where they are, and no one really cares if you think about it. If they're gone, they're gone and their homeless tent is all that remains. No one's ever gonna ask questions and find them. In turn, that means these creatures can continue to feed freely. They can expand and grow, and their population can push out even more into urban areas. Yeah, what I'm saying is possible that this is all just whack conspiracy theory, but you think a 500, 600 pound, 700 pound predator has to eat something and there's only so many deer around in a certain area. This is also the same reason why cats and dogs go missing in neighborhoods that these things frequent. You see it all over the place. It is very common. Unfortunately, we'll never get people to officially tell us what's going on, so we just have to rely on ourselves and take heed and caution on our own. I'm not saying you should avoid national parks. 
I'm saying you should go into them very cautiously, being highly acute to every inch of your surroundings because you can never let your guard down for too long. And the real kicker here is that not everybody goes missing. But do you really want to be part of the percentage that does? Assuming that these creatures are highly intelligent and masters of camouflage, I just feel like entering these national parks is a huge risk. And those feelings are strongly supported by my park ranger and law enforcement official friends. I really worry about the COVID-19 pandemic and everything being shut down, like national parks and people not being out because that means these things are gonna start exploring more and more, entering into suburban neighborhoods, looking more for food more than ever. Keep an eye out and be vigilant because there's no telling where you might see one of these things. December, 2013. I used to work about 30 miles away from where I live. One night, I had been stuck in heavy traffic coming home I take Lassix, so after a while, I really had to go to the bathroom. I kept telling myself that I was almost home and tried to hold it until I got there. By the time I got to my exit, I knew I wasn't going to make it to my house, so I pulled up to an area where Fidelity Investments is located and found an area that was isolated. This area is heavily wooded with walking trails and a lot of game, but it is also in a very populated area. I pulled up a little side drive off one of the main roads. That little drive is about 100 feet long with only room for one car. It went up in elevation and had bushes on the right side facing the main road. On the left side, there was a guardrail and a view of the valley below. The area up there is huge and isolated with several buildings that are all spaced out. The place is dark at night because there are intermittent streetlights up there. At night, it's pretty deserted too. A few cars go through that area, though, because it's a shortcut people use to go from Taylor Mill over to 3L Highway, where there are stores, restaurants, etc. When you're up there, you're above everything around this area. When I stopped, I got out of my car, waited a moment, and looked around to make sure there were no other cars. It was winter, so the bushes between where I was and the road below me didn't have many leaves on them. Because of that, you could see right through them. I was up on this little rise, about 20 or 30 feet above the drive, which was four lanes wide. To the left of me was a street light and more woods that went down another hill to the main road. I went to the back of my car and did what I had to do. When I finished, I stood up and all at once, every hair on my body stood up. I knew I wasn't alone. I scanned the area in front of me and must have heard something behind me because I turned around and there were three deer standing there, all huddled up together between my car and the guardrail. They weren't looking at me. They were looking across the road. I looked back over there and that was when I saw a figure standing between the bushes in front of it and the tree line behind it. It was huge. I stand 5'5", five five. some of those bushes were about 6 feet tall, but they only came up to about the collarbone area on this thing. Due to the street light to the right of it, about 20 feet away, I was able to get a pretty clean outline of this thing. It had a large dog shaped head and pointed ears. I couldn't make out its neck, but I could make out massive shoulders. That's when it growled at me. It was a deep vibration I could feel in my chest. My body just took over at that point. I have to explain this part of it to you. I worked security for years in California in the music business. As a woman, I have to really work out and train to defend myself. I kicked box for eight years and worked out every single day. I also trained dogs, mainly Anatolian shepherds and German shepherds. Sometimes I have to establish who's the alpha and to do that, I get them down hold them in place, grab them by their ear, and growl until they submit. Then the training can start. So when this thing growled at me, it was just pure instinct. I dropped down to a crouching position and growled right back at it. When I did that, it stopped growling and started sniffing the air. Its snout went up and turned its head slightly as it was sniffing. 
and then took a few steps forward. I was still crouched down on all fours, moved forward, still growling at the thing. When I did that, it stopped. I stood up, kept staring right at it. I never broke eye contact with it. Then, it slowly stepped back into the tree line until I couldn't make it out as clearly as before and started to move to the right of me. The deer were still behind me. They were so close I could have reached out and touched them. I waved my arms and told them to get out of there. When I did that, they went back over the guardrail and took off down the hill. That's when I jumped in my car and got out of there as fast as I could. I felt this thing was trying to circle behind me and I wasn't going to wait around for that. Do I think I scared it? No. But I do think I confused it for a couple of minutes and that gave me some time to move. I had told my husband about what happened up there, but I didn't tell him exactly what I saw. He would think I was nuts, and to be honest, I thought I was a little crazy myself until I saw a picture of a dogman. I know there are other things in this world that can't be explained. I've seen them, but this was beyond any of those things. Since this happened, I can't take that shortcut through that area anymore. My husband took me back over that way once to see the area and I was begging him to get me out of there the whole time. I thought I was going to throw up. The wildlife up there has almost totally disappeared. I never see anything up on the hills anymore. The street I live on is only about one mile or so down the hill from this place and lately, we have seen coyotes on the streets, like they have been chased out and pets here have started to go missing. We've also seen a large black figure moving through our backyards down here. The dogs throughout the neighborhood go crazy regularly now too. People were calling the cops when we saw that large black figure jumping fences. I'm concerned that it has come down the hill after eating everything up there. I should start off explaining that my partner and I are experienced Bigfoot investigators who are in a unique situation, as we have a family group living in our research area. Last October, during the full moon, my partner and I were on our hilltop having quite a bit of success with two juveniles and one adult that we noticed. We could hear them walking in the leaf litter, and every once in a while, we could also hear a clack or wood knock from different directions. After a while, it seemed the feeling of fun for them dissipated and became a lot more cautious. Mike heard something to our north and went a ways down to investigate while I stayed by the camp, just to make sure it wasn't a diversion. He came back in a rush and said he had seen one of the young ones come out of the woodline, running for the other side of the fire break, and what was following, he said, he couldn't comprehend. It was about six feet tall with pointy ears and a long snout. At this point, I have to say that neither of us have really given any creed to the whole dogman, wolfman, grassman theory. We just thought it was a mistaken identification of a Bigfoot or a bear. I had purchased a 40 caliber handgun and some hydroshock ammunition for it earlier that day, so it was in my vehicle. After Mike had explained what he had seen, I retrieved my weapon and loaded it. All the while, we could hear the two young ones chattering and the big one stomping all to our backside. They were pissed or upset about something and they never acted that way with us. I had Mike take me down the fire break to where he saw this creature and with spotlights, we scanned the area. We could hear something moving around and a few short growls. Finally, Mike caught it with the spotlight going between trees and what I witnessed is something I would never have dreamed of seeing except on a movie screen. A six foot wolf walking on its hind legs. I fired my weapon in the air and it turned to the southeast into the woods. We cautiously made our way back to camp but we could hear this thing pacing us to our left. As we got back to camp, we kept listening to this thing approaching us from the woods. Mike turned on the spotlight and I leveled my gun wherever the sound was coming from. It was approaching us without fear, and it felt to both of us like it was stalking us, as it was one of our juvies that Mike had witnessed. It came out from between the trees, and I shot it square in the ribs at about 20 yards away. 
We measured the next day, and I am a very good shot. I saw the wound, and know without a doubt I hit it. It fell to the ground, but immediately got up and ran to the southeast. We could hear it crash through the brush, and we even heard it fall down or trip over something. But it continued to head in pretty much a southerly direction, down the hill, paralleling the fire break. We were both freaked out by this time and broke camp and left. The next morning, I loaded up a few extra clips and we went back up to see if it died somewhere close or was just wounded, so we felt we had to track it down. We did track it from the point where I shot it, all the way down the canyon and even found where it made such a ruckus when it fell. The leaf litter was up all ended and was fairly easy to track. At one point, we did find a perfect canine track in the mud ridge, but it was over 8 inches across. The thing that absolutely baffled both of us was that there was no blood trail. None. We both saw the bullet hit, yet no blood? We tracked it all the way down the canyon until we lost the trail. We talked to a Native American couple, we know, and they immediately said Skinwalker. We contacted a few other investigators to try and figure out what in the hell happened. I mentioned before that neither of us took any creed from any dogman reportings, but I do know that neither of us wants to experience it again, and I have never gone out in the woods unarmed since that day. July 1st, 2014. I was on patrol as a deputy sheriff for the county and was usually assigned to the Highway 13 and Highway 30 corridors. However, I recall that particular July 1st, however, that a young man, 16 or 17 years old, had been sucked into a storm drain which emptied into Cedar Lake near the Quaker Oats plant. This is a place with heavy foot traffic and located in an urban setting the area is also bordered by Mohawk Park. As the search went on into the night, the local PD got the county involved. I parked my cruiser at what I believe was the electric company storage yard. The yard had what I estimated to be a 10-foot fence that ran parallel to a paved bike trail on the other side which runs a large concrete spillway to siphon off floodwaters. I arrived at what I estimate to be roughly 11.30 p.m to approximately 11.45 p.m. I estimate only because I assure you there never was nor will be an official statement or record with my name on it telling this story. As I left the lot, I was at the north end of the lake and headed west on foot. There was a lot of brush and saplings between the spillway and the trail, so I proceeded onto the point of the trail that turns south near where Cedar Lake empties into the Cedar River. This is all under the railroad tracks leading into the Quaker Oats. There are multiple tracks at the turn I mentioned before, and the only track furthest from myself had a train on it. With my attention on the spillway, I hardly noticed at first a faint red colored light, a distance north from my position. It was coming down the track on the other side of the train. I thought it perhaps the trail lights of a car. Not being that patrol route, I had no knowledge that there was, in fact, no road in that direction. There ain't much things in the world that scare me. Put simply, I've seen some things in my days. But nothing prepared me for that night. The lights disappeared, and that was that. Or so I figured. About five minutes passed before I hear a snorting, almost sniffing sound coming from the other side of the tracks. When I turned, the first thing I saw were the eyes. They glowed a dull red. The thing was at least 8 foot tall, pushing 450. I judge this by the fact that I am 6'4 and weigh 280 pounds. I turned my light, and to this day, I wish I hadn't. It had pointed ears and a long muzzle, and it looked me right in the face before it bolted into the timber. It was not a mask, and it was not a person in a costume. Who would walk up on an armed man, with a police radio in full uniform, and risk getting shot. I remember it was so surreal, so final, I guess. I know it's in the dark now. People can say or think what they want, but even with a chambered round and a full magazine and a Glock 40, didn't feel like enough firepower. I unholstered and fell back toward the trail 
and to the electric company's storage yard. Putting the fence to my back, I made a hasty retreat to a lot with my cruiser. I don't think I holstered my pistol till I got out of the park. I never spoke of it then and honestly don't know why I am now, but one thing is for certain, it knew I was there and it was watching my every move. I'll never go back and I no longer work with the department since becoming a minister, but I still carry a Glock with hollow point rounds tipped with silver if, and I rarely do, leave my home at night. August was 17 years old at the time. My dad and mom had taken my little brother and sister to Tucson to do something for the day. We lived in a trailer in a rural area outside of Sierra Vista. We had two horses, two dogs, a cow, and some chickens on the small amount of land we had. As the eldest son, it was my job to feed and take care of them. On the night in question, it was a stormy monsoon rain with thunder and lightning going on. But like monsoons can be, they rage and then settle into the lull and rage again. I was getting ready to settle down and watch a good movie when all of a sudden, my two dogs start barking and wouldn't shut up. When I told them to calm down, in fact. In the previous week or so before, my dogs had been acting up and barking a lot at night. I just attributed this to coyotes that I'd heard howling in the night. So I got my dad's rifle and just one bullet in case I had to shoot to scare off the coyote or kill it if rabid. I rested the loaded rifle near the wall by the back door and turned on the floodlights outside the trailer. The rain had just stopped so I looked out by the window near the front door and saw our two horses and cow staring as if through the front door to the back door of the trailer where the dogs were barking. I thought, maybe they're scared of the coyotes. So I grabbed the rifle and opened up the back door. As I was getting near the back door, I heard my dogs whimpering and crying. Now I was thinking, could it be a pack of coyotes? So I put a few bullets in my pocket, figuring I could load them if I didn't like what I saw. I opened the door and the darnest thing happened. My two dogs beeline rushed past me to the center of the trailer and hunkered down right in the kitchen. Mud is everywhere on the floor from their paws and I'm pissed because I have to clean it up now. So I close the door and go to try to get my dogs to get out, but they wouldn't budge and squirmed out of my arms when I tried to grab them. They were terrified. Now I was mad at the coyotes and grabbed the rifle to go run them off or kill them. The trailer sits on a foundation of blocks. The front and back doors are accessible by a small set of small stairs. I'm 5'6", by the way. I opened the back door and was looking out in the darkness. At that point, I was about to step out when I saw a set of eyes looking back at me out of the darkness. From the top of my head in the trailer to the ground is around seven plus feet or so. And here is a set of eyes looking at me, level and square on. I'm like, darn, Coyote must be on a small gravel hill. We used to pave the road, or it's a bird on a mesquite bush. But I was thinking to myself, what monsoon was awfully bad and rained hard? What kind of bird would hunker down on a mesquite bush? And why would a coyote be out in a downpour? So I'm raising my rifle and drawing a bead on the eyes when lightning lights up the night. All of a sudden, the lightning illuminates a small gravel hill that's like six feet high and the surrounding mesquite bushes. The light winks out as fast as it appeared from the lightning though. There was nothing on the gravel hill and no bird on any of the mesquite bushes. Then it dawned on me. Whatever it was, it was very tall and was still staring at me. A sense of dread crept over me all of a sudden, as I realized that the rifle had only one measly bullet, and if I missed, there was no way I'd be able to reload in time before this thing, whatever it was, was on me. I kept the gun pointed at it as I quickly closed the door. I locked the door, realizing this trailer would never withstand whatever it was that was out there if it attacked. I locked the front door and turned on all of the lights in the house. 
I grabbed all the bullets, the 30 odd six, and the 22 rifle, and then got in the kitchen with the dogs and I loaded each rifle full on. I hugged my dogs and prayed that whatever it was went away and didn't attack. I stayed awake that whole night until my parents got back. My dad was furious that all the lights were on. My dad checked outside though for coyotes, but whatever it was, was gone. Some say skinwalker, but I think otherwise. July 2nd, 2015. While scanning the valley floor for sheep a mile from my house, I noticed two loping figures. Initially, I just thought the figures were coyotes or stray dogs, but as the two figures neared an old sunken vehicle, I realized that the things were about the size of the vehicle itself, nearly eight feet long. No animal could be that big on the res. I watched the two figures until they disappeared in the woods across the valley. It was starting to get dark, but the moon was bright enough, so I walked without a light. As I walked down the mountain, I heard something yelling. It was like a howl or a yell. I started to hurry. Then, when I got to my house, I locked the door and spent the night listening to the strangest sounds. I'm sure it was a skinwalker, but I found this and was surprised at what I saw. Eight years ago, my brother John was heading home from his girlfriend's house off a country road outside of Boulder, 11 miles south of Pinedale, Wyoming. It was around 1 or 2 a.m., when he saw what he said was a huge dog traversing down the slope of the south side of the road and commencing to run alongside his pickup. He was driving a 6970 Ford F-150 High Boy, which came from the factory lifted. The dogman was running with him at around 40 miles an hour. There is a two to three foot barrow ditch running along the road and the dogman's head was level with his as he was driving. So John puts its height at around seven to eight feet it was dark in color with gray or white on its muzzle, running from its nose to under its eyes which were amber in color. He sped up to 45 and then the dogman kept up with him, often looking inside the pickup. He said at around 50 miles an hour, he lost it and that's really all he would ever tell me. I'll start off by saying that I have never believed in any of these sort of creatures, but I saw something in early 2009 that really disturbed me and is making me change my mind. I was not under the influence of any drugs and I have better than average eyesight and the lighting was nearing sunset, but I was still able to see clearly. So I'll get this underway and explain my story and maybe someone can shed some light on this for me. I live in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, which is in west central Minnesota, about an hour drive from Fargo, North Dakota. My mother-in-law lives out in the country, about three or four miles out of Fergus Falls, and I was staying there a while with my wife and her mother while they went shopping in town. They called me and asked if I wanted to go to a 7 p.m. movie. So I left the house at about 6.30, 6.45 to meet them at the theater about two miles away from their house on a country road known as Wendell Road, along the Mastinka River, I saw three white-tailed deer. Two of the deer were rather small, probably just yearlings and a larger doe, who I assumed was their mother. Me, being an avid hunter, lover of wildlife, and future wildlife biologist, stopped to look at the deer. I should also mention that I hunt in the area and have spent my whole life in the Fergus Falls area. The deer were following a small creek bed, which is in fact the Mastinka River, so there were hardly any trees, except for one. Maybe because I didn't see it there, but because of the tree, but I just noticed something crouching behind the tree on my side of the road. Looking at the deer, and to my belief, hunting them. It just sat there, looking at the deer, taking no notice of me, even though I was in my truck no more than 40 yards away, with a clear view, with nothing obstructing my view of it. It had one hand on the tree that it was bracing itself with. What struck me as shocking was the fact that it seemed to be a two-legged creature and not a four-legged one. 
Its hands appeared to have opposable thumbs and were rather slender and long, very unlike a wolf. The creature looked as though it had stood upright. It would be over seven feet tall, with a protruding muzzle, broad shoulders, a slender waist, thick muscular thighs, and being as there was snow on the ground, I couldn't see the feet. He was deep, dark brown in color throughout the body. After several seconds of looking at the creature in shock, the deer ran off. Then, something amazing happened. It looked right at me, as though blaming me for losing his meal. He just sat there, looking at me, and blinking, but not moving. This scared the crap out of me, so I hit the gas pedal and drove off. It was very dark after the movie, so I didn't feel much like trudging through the three and a half feet of snow with the possibility of a monster lurking in the area who is currently looking for a meal that I scared off. So, at about 10 a.m., I went back there and walked down to the tree. Under the tree, there was no snow, so there were no tracks that I could see. But leading up to the tree, there were three tracks leading in from my grandmother-in-law's field, which was hard, black dirt. And if you know what a Minnesota field looks like in late winter, early spring, you can't make out anything of the dirt. The tracks I did find were only about six to seven inches in length, but were clearly canine prints, with the exception of four toe looking marks in the snow. This occurred in early December of 2011. At around 2 a.m. in the morning, a friend and I were sitting in my bedroom hanging out whenever we both noticed something moving on my surveillance monitor. I had a camera pointed down my driveway so I could see whenever I had company drive up. When we both looked up, I saw what appeared to be a large canine running on all fours and in mid run, this thing came up on its hind legs and continued running across my field and across my driveway and into my brother's field on two legs. I was in shock and my friend immediately turned to me with her mouth wide open. I asked her, what did you just see? And she replied with, well, what did you see? I saw where this was going, so I then asked her, how many legs was it running on? She replied, it was running on four but went to two. I then had a cold chill run through my body as I knew she saw what I had seen. I jumped up and grabbed my night vision scope that I had recently purchased and ran to my front door with my friend behind me. I must admit, I was hesitant to open that door for fear of it maybe standing there. So I opened the door while letting out a roar as to maybe shock it if it was there, but it wasn't. Hey, I didn't know. I cautiously walked out on my front porch and took the scope and scanned the front field. There was nothing to be seen nor do I know which direction it went in besides I had seen it last. I waited until daybreak and went out to where it crossed my driveway and I found a paw print that was a good 12 by 12 inches. I was stunned. I just stood there looking back at the woods it had came from and looked south to where it was headed. I had no way to save the print and didn't think to take a picture at the time, nor was my camera recording at the time of the sighting either. From what I could see on the camera, this thing was massive in its upper body. I can still remember seeing the muscles flexing and the muscularity in its upper back as it came to its full height. It was running in weeds that came to my waist, but on all fours, it was a good two feet above them, and when it went to full height, I would estimate it to be a good eight foot tall. Due to the camera showing only black and white, I didn't get to see its color, but I could tell you it was dark. Its head is something else that stands out as I could see the snout and its pointed ears which were laid back whenever it went to two legs. I am a research and development technician, so I am trained to watch for vivid details and even though this thing was moving faster and faster than any human, I was transfixed on its form and what I was seeing. It was headed south into property that connects to the Stennis Space Center's buffer zone which is over 100,000 acres of untouched and uninhabited acreage that was put aside for the space shuttle program in Hancock County. Since the mid-60s, 
so it has all the resources it needs in order to survive in those woods and to go undetected. I have always been an outdoors man, but since that sighting, I will not go out in the woods without a gun on me now. I know for a fact I do not want to run into that thing up close. I was only 19 when this happened to me. It was back in the early fall of 1981, when I was spending a lot of my time working. When I was 19, I lived outside of Fayetteville, not too far, about 30 or so miles away in a small town known to many as Siloam Springs. Because of the job I worked at, it would require me to pull later shifts since I would usually be covering more than just my job. I had a good-for-nothing boss at the time who insisted that it saved the company more money by throwing their employees with bigger tasks and workloads, but no overtime pay. But that's a story for another day. One evening, I was driving back home outside of Fayetteville along Highway 68. I'm probably on the road for no more than a couple of minutes before my eyes catch something. This tall figure walking alongside the road about 50 feet away from the car. As I pull closer to it, I can see that this looked to be someone in an elaborate werewolf in London costume from way back. Why would they be wandering the side of the road out here? I thought the whole thing was strange, but then I got closer, and what I thought to be a person actually turned its head. I realized in that moment, it wasn't just somebody having a convincing werewolf costume party. If there was ever a living werewolf, this was it. I just remember how scary its face looked. I think my headlights caught its attention because as it turned around, it also lifted up its arm as if to shield its eyes from the light. After standing there for a second, it quickly vanished off the road on the same side it was on. Freaked me the hell out. I had seen enough to know that it was not a person. A person doesn't act like that in a costume or move like that. I could tell even in the poor lighting, its fur had to be thick, it was long and stringly. Think of a long-haired fluffy dog, I guess. I'm not sure how to explain it. It had a longer snout, but the upper part of its face is what I think was more fierce looking. It just had an angry expression. You know how dogs can look when they're happy, or even when they're mad? It was the same kind of thing. It just seemed to have a scowl on its face. I sought for what felt like an eternity, but it did raise up its arm fairly quickly to shield its eyes from my headlights. When I had seen it, I came down almost to a stop to cruise and to try to figure out what it was I was looking at. Never in all my years have I ever seen such a thing. I know about Bigfoots, but I don't know what it is I encountered that night. Back in the early 80s, I had went fishing with a couple of buddies out in a lake that was adjacent to the Mississippi River. I believe the year was either 84 or 85. This was also near the town of Hughes, not far off from Highway 147. The lay of the land is thick with brush and forest, intermixed with cypress and pine. It's a beautiful wetland area. We were exploring the area and hiking around along the lakes and areas near the large river. It was nearing sundown and we still had a ways to go to get back to where we had come from. We all heard this loud crashing sound near the bank of the river and the thick foliage and undergrowth. We weren't sure if it could have possibly been a stray cow or maybe another fisherman perhaps. All of a sudden, we see this thing that was shaped like a person appear out of the foliage just feet from the edge of the water. It looked just like a dog standing up on two legs. It had thick matted hair, and its head was disproportionately large. I still remember those large pointed ears. I don't know why, how, who or what, but by the grace of God Almighty, it didn't notice us, somehow. After maybe a second of appearing out of the foliage, it lifted its head up in the air and sniffed around like just like how a dog does. Then it looked off in the opposite direction we were and jumped full body into the river. All three of us were shocked but amazed by what we had just seen. My one friend kept trying to tell me it was just a bear, 
but it was definitely canine looking, no doubt about that. From the distance we were at too, I would say it was at least as tall as we were. It even had a thin, tapered waist like a dog, and dog-like legs. It was eerie. I don't think there's any native wild dogs that walk upright in this area, but I guess I'm wrong. I know I've heard people talk about strange things that happen near the river and in the woods, but I always just thought it was more hoaxes and BSing. Anyway, the entirety of the encounter lasted maybe 20 seconds in total. I feel like that's being pretty gracious, maybe more like 10 to 15 seconds. I should state that we didn't smell anything unusual in that moment or before or after the incident. Never got any weird feelings, experienced anything weird or anything unusual. It was just when we heard that crashing sound that we saw this thing. We were about 100 plus feet away from it, but where it was at, we had a clear as day view of this thing. Even in dusk, there was enough light to make out vivid details. Late summer, back in 2009, I was visiting family that lived outside of Memphis in the evening time. I was driving in the truck with my brothers and cousins from my dad's side of the family. We were heading to their property to go feed the horses and livestock. It was a longer drive. We ended up having to take a small dirt road that went quite a ways off the main road for quite some distance. Just like out of a horror movie, my brothers get a call from their mom who's at the house to just see where they were. They got her on speakerphone and they're having casual conversation for the most part. Then they start talking about how the horses have acted really spooked all day long and are acting strange. My brothers say that they have noticed that too and they're not sure why since that hardly if ever happens. I kid you not, not even a couple minutes later, this freak of nature looking dog thing steps out across the road, looks at our vehicle, and quickly darts into the woods. All of us were screaming, did you see that? My stepmom was still on the phone with my brothers and we're all freaking out. Whatever it was had long brown shaggy hair, a massive dog head with lots of teeth and huge claws on its hands. I distinctly remember it tucking its arms and hands up to its body like a T-Rex does when it ran across the road. I also vividly recall it having long 12 inch black claws off each of its fingertips. For whatever reason, my eyes went right to its hands. Maybe because it looked so terrifying. The hands reminded me a lot of raccoon hands actually, just with really long large claws. I briefly saw the face but it happened so fast I think I just spent more time taking it all in. After more freaking out and trying to make sense of it, I almost wonder if that's what had caused the horses to act up. They only lived a couple of miles away from the spot we saw this thing. They had been acting up all morning long and then that happened in the evening. When it crossed the road, it seemed to come from the general direction of our house so I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. I have truly no idea though. I do remember that evening the horses seemed to be a little more calmed down, and the following day, they were okay. I don't think any of us could really put a finger on exactly what it was we saw, but my brothers say it was an alien dog or something. It just looked like a big, upright, hairy wolf dog. I've thought about the whole werewolf thing too, but I don't know. Werewolves are usually painted in a much more human-like light than this thing was. It was just full-on wild animal. You could tell by the way it looked and moved. Very humanoid looking, but like a wild beast. I do recall seeing its hair blowing a little bit in the wind as it dove across the road after seeing us. From what I can remember about seeing the body, it was very lean. There were muscles rippling by where its front of its body was, like the chest and stomach. I remember that. I know for a fact that this was not a bear, wolf, Regular dog, coyote, nothing that I've ever seen before. That's the weirdest thing. Even though it looked very dog-like, it didn't look exactly like just a dog standing there. Like I said, it was very humanoid and looked like its own being. Its face from what I remember was more wolf-like in appearance, but still very dog-like. I want to say that I'm being honest and sharing this sensitive information. 
I know there's a lot of people I could just openly tell the story to because I would be mocked and criticized for such things. I'm here to tell you there are things beyond our imagination that we don't know about living out there. I was a pretty big skeptic of things too that I didn't normally or couldn't normally see with my own eyes. I used to believe that if there were any unknown species of anything living in North America, especially the woods, we would know by now due to our dense population and at technology of exploration. I guess I was wrong and can happily admit that. I was on a cross-country trip with my 13-year-old son some years back. We were headed to a hotel and were currently in Arkansas at the time. It was nighttime and we were lost and both of our phones were dead, so we were kind of just driving around aimlessly. I can't tell you the exact road we were on because I don't remember. I can tell you we were somewhere close to Highway 27 as that is the last road I remember. I also remember us being on a two-lane highway and my son complaining that he had to pee real bad, so we pulled over. There is thick forest around us and especially where I pulled off to, so I figured it would be the perfect spot for him to run up into the trees and relieve himself. Using his phone as a flashlight, he wandered off about 20 feet just into the tree line. I'm sitting there in the car, checking my phone to see if I can get anything, and I hear what sounds like footsteps sprinting to my car. I turn my head to look over and my son's frantically opening the door, jumping in and screaming at me to go, go, go. He's yelling and being crazy, and I'm trying to calmly talk to him and figure out what just happened, and he starts getting really emotional and begging me to go and not explaining anything. This was out of character for my son. He never acted like this. My son, by nature, is very quiet and collective. He's a good boy and he's been out with me on all sorts of adventures. He's definitely not a scaredy cat. In fact, when he was younger, he's the one who decided to stick his whole arm in an ant mound, but that's a different story. Something spooked him this time so bad that he was totally acting weird. So I pulled out of there and we're driving down the road and I'm trying to figure out if he even got to use the bathroom. He doesn't even acknowledge the question and instead just tells me there was a big wolf that he had ran into in the tree line. What? When I asked him, what do you mean wolf? He said this thing was the size of a grizzly bear and standing on two legs. He said it stuck its hand out to try and grab him, but ended up turning around and ran back to the car just in time. The scariest thing he told me is, Dad, I'm 13 and I don't believe in monsters, but that was a real life monster. I know many parents would blow their child off, and tell them they probably just saw something that spooked them. I've raised my son to be very logical and analytical. I teach him to question everything, and I believe my son saw something, because I even try to reassure him that maybe in the poor lighting, it was just a bear. He explains to me that because he was so close to this thing, he got a good look at it, or at least enough of a look at it, and said, "Their bears don't have teeth like this, Dad. Of course, this was years ago, and he is now 20. We just recently brought up this event again in conversation, and he goes, Dad, I guess what I seen that night is what they call a dog man. I guess they are all over America, and I happen to see one. I asked him if they are like werewolves, and he said no, that they're just upright walking canine cryptids. I'm not too sure what I think about the whole thing, but it is interesting, and I thought you would like me to share it with you. I wanted to talk to you about a strange encounter I had years ago when I went turkey hunting down by the Mississippi River. I went with my brother, home we grew up together very close. A lot of brothers fight and end up being distant from one another. However, me and my brother grew up playing video games and enjoying the outdoors together. One of our favorite pastimes is to go fishing, so we got up early. This is probably about 4 or 5 in the morning if I recall correctly. And for whatever reason on this morning, we had forgot to bring any flashlights, so we were trying to track through the woods in the dark with all of our supplies. That's when we heard things that make this whole incident terrifying. 
Me and my brother are just a couple of feet away from each other, navigating our way when we begin to hear sounds like a stampede around us going the opposite direction into the thick wilderness. I'm not kidding when I say stampede. It sounded like multiples of these big heavy animals trotting around us, maybe not even 20 feet away. When I tell people this, during this part of the story, they tell me it was probably a bunch of bucks. But I'm here to tell you I know what a quadruped animal sounds like. This wasn't it. I have heard deer run many times, and this did not sound like it. It didn't sound like hooves. And when I say run, I'm talking about people. It sounded like multiple big heavy people were running all around us in the opposite direction we were going. Multiple people. Maybe like 10. Very, very heavy footsteps. The noises that accompanied were equally terrifying. My brother and I were frozen still as this was going on, all the while hearing grunts and moans. Grunts that were very guttural. Reminded me of a lion's guttural growl almost. The whole thing had lasted 20 seconds, and then just like that it was gone. I don't think we broke silence for maybe a minute or two after. My brother whispered, What the hell was that? I had no idea. I didn't even know what had just happened. We decided to screw the fishing trip right then and there and get back to the truck and go. The whole way back we were trying to make sense of what just happened and what kind of animal could even do that. We kept coming back to moose or bear or deer because it's the only thing that would or could make sense with how heavy this was but we both agreed it didn't sound like something running on four legs. There's nothing in the woods that's heavy that runs on two legs. Very freaky to think about. And the growling? There's no animals we can pinpoint those noises to. This happened just last summer when I went horseback riding with a couple of friends. It was about three in the afternoon and the sun was bright and it was perfect weather outside. The horses we were riding were actually my friends. These were well behaved, they had a lot of human contact and were ridden a lot. In fact, I had ridden on these horses a couple of times before but it had been at least a few months so I was joyful to be back on such a peaceful, loving animal. My friend and his horses choose between three to four different trails that go along their property, all of them being several miles in length at one point or another loop around. My friend is lucky enough to have hundreds of acres that he had inherited through family and decided to use them for horseback riding and hunting. Beautiful, beautiful backcountry, I will say. We were riding along the trail and we were in an area with thick forest on both sides of us, which is not too abnormal since most of the trail does have thick forest, but other parts of the trail were open and more rocky and mountainous. We were chatting amongst ourselves when suddenly my friend's horse directly in front of me starts freaking out. Not even two seconds later, both my horse and my other friend who owns the horses starts freaking out. The horses, they were acting skittish and out of control. We're trying to calm the horses down when we start hearing what sounds like trees being knocked over and smashed. This was so loud and it wasn't far away from us. It just sounded like a massive bulldozer being driven through the woods, coming straight in our direction. But there was no machinery sound, nothing. Just the sound of something very large coming through and crashing through the woods. Whatever it was must have spooked the living hell out of our horses. I don't even think there was much communication other than just pure action and fight or flight. We all turned around in unison with our horses, trying to get them to go back the way we came. As we managed to get a hold of the horses enough to start going back in the direction, we came and I turned my head around behind me to see a large pair of canine-like ears poking through the forestry. As my brain scrambled to find an appropriate answer for what I'm seeing, I then noticed these glowing red eyes slightly lower than the ears and realized we're being watched by something. Of course, the horses are moving relatively quickly now because they are so freaked out. Well, we all were because of the noise that is encroaching on us. We got out of there too fast for me to be able to properly discern what it was coming towards us. It didn't stop. I know for a fact I saw those large red eyes and the canine ears. It's kind of the same 
glow to the eyes that you would see in an eye shine when headlights hit eyes, but they were red. I have no explanation for the incredible and disastrous noises coming from the forest headed in our direction. The only thing I really know about that area is that it is really out there in the woods. There would be no reason for somebody else to be out there, since it's all private land. Due to the size and sounds that we heard, I really don't think it was a person. It could have been a large moose or something of that crashing size, but it was incredibly unsettling, and I'm not sure how to summarize the experience other than it freaked us all the hell out and made us very apprehensive about going back down that trail again. I don't know if you remember me. It's been months since I've written to you. A while back, I had traveled into the Arkansas Ozarks and found that dead black bear that was ripped to shreds. I'm sure you get a lot of stories sent to you, so hopefully you might remember mine. I might just have to try and dig up your episode with my story in it, but I digress. A few months ago, before all the quarantine craziness, I had traveled back into the Ozarks and was hiking around. I was actually searching for good streams to fish out of, and I was around the Richland Creek area, to be exact. I know there are bear in the area, and that's about the only large, big animal that I'm familiar with. The area and terrain that I was in is very rocky, and I remember walking along the edge of the creek, looking down into the very soft gravel. I noticed tiny indents. Well, not tiny, but tiny as in large footprint, but with a very light indentation because of the gravel. My eyes followed it about 10 feet, and then right there, on the very edge of the creek, were some of the largest wolf tracks I've ever seen. Of course, the one time I don't bring my camera with me, I see something like this. The only thing I can personally compare them to is my own hand. It was easily double the size of my hand. Absolutely massive. It was without a doubt a canine track. I mean, canine prints are pretty distinctive and they are hard to mistake. Normally, I would just suggest somebody had their dog out here, but I don't believe dogs get this big, of any breed. If I had to measure with my eyes, I would say in total it was maybe 14 and 15 inches in length, or from corner to corner, I guess. Anyway, just thought I would share that with you. This was back in February, when things were still very wet. I was visiting some friends down in Huntington, Arkansas, back in 91 for the summer. We decided to go to this neat little lake that was great for bass fishing. One thing you got to be careful about down there is water moccasins everywhere, and they will bite. So there I am, trudging along the bank of the lake, trying to watch every single step very carefully. That's when I started hearing commotion off to my left. When I turned my head and saw one of the largest creatures in my life staring at me, watching me. I've never been so afraid in my life. This thing looks like it came from the pits of hell. It was tall, standing on two feet, covered in dark black hair that almost looked to absorb light itself, it was so jet black. The eyes felt like they put me in a trance. These glowing red-orange orbs, or amber I guess you would call it. I've never felt such hate and malice off a of being before. As soon as we locked eyes, I just felt that this thing was bad news, and if I stuck around, it was really going to hurt me. I knew not to run, because I didn't know what this thing was. If it was a predator, I would only incite the chase if I ran. So I tried to back away slowly, which I did until it was entirely out of sight. It never followed me, just continued to watch me even as I moved away. As I backed further and further out, this thing kept its focus on the lake as it was intently watching something in the water. I don't know what. When I made it back to my friends, they laughed at me, asking me why I was so pale and shaking. I knew in that moment if I told them what I'd seen, I'd be the laughing stock of the group for the day. So I just said I saw a big moccasin and nearly avoided it. I'm no horror movie fan, but sometimes when I've watched werewolf movies before, it really gives me the creeps, because they always remind me so much of what I saw that day. Not saying it was a werewolf, just that this thing and those things from the movies looked very similar. I believe what I saw was definitely more than an animal. 
When it and I locked eyes, I could tell there was intelligence in this being I was staring at, and it wasn't just a wild animal. It felt evil, but still very intelligent, if that makes any sense. 